Hi, and welcome to the fourth section of this course about convolutional neural networks. This section will be divided in four different videos. In the first one, we will understand the basic concepts of convolutional neural networks, one of the most successful and used deep learning algorithms so far. Then, in the second video, we will complete our digression on such algorithm with more details which will help you to design a state-of-the-art deep learning model you can use to solve your specific problem. In the third video, we will learn with more details how to actually implement and use convolutional neural networks in R using the MXNet package. And finally, in the last video, we will see as a real use case how to classify real-world images in just five minutes' time. Amazing, right? So let's move to the first video of this section, Introduction to Convolutional Neural Networks, Part 1. In this video, we will firstly point out the key features of convolutional neural networks and how they differ from previously introduced algorithms like multi-hidden layer artificial neural networks. Then we will introduce a broad architectural overview of such artificial networks, starting to define the basic computational layers a CNN is composed of. In particular, we will start by defining the two most important types of layers, convolutional layers at the very heart of every CNN and the pooling layers. So, as we have seen in the previous sections, artificial neural networks receive an input, a single vector, and transform it through a series of hidden layers. Let's say we have to classify 32 by 32 RGB images. A single fully connected neuron in the first hidden layer would have 32 times 32 times 3, that is 3072 weights. This amount still seems manageable, but clearly this fully connected structure does not scale to larger images. For example, an image of more respectable size, for example 200 by 200, would lead to neurons that have 200 times 200 times 3, that is 120,000 weights. Moreover, we would almost certainly want to have several of such neurons so the parameters would grow very quickly. Clearly, this full connectivity is wasteful and the huge number of parameters would quickly lead to overfitting. Convolutional neural networks are still made up of neurons that have learnable weights and biases, but what makes them better and more efficient is the concept of weights sharing and local connectivity that is having exactly the same values for some set of weights across some layers and also reducing the total number of connections so that a neuron is not connected to all the neurons in the previous layer. This actually means that we are now able to scale very well in terms of number of neurons, that our model now acquires translation invariance and robustness with regards to noise and other small variations in the input patterns, and also that these networks can work now extremely well on high-dimensional patterns like images. Concerning the architecture, a CNN is still composed of a number of subsequent layers, but each layer has neurons arranged in three dimensions instead of only one, like for hidden layers, width, height, and depth. For example, an input image can be considered as an input volume of activations where the depth is free as the different color channels. We can also see a CNN as a sequence of layers which transform one volume of activations to another through a differentiable function. There are three fundamental types of layers in a CNN. Convolutional layers uh, at the very heart of convolutional neural networks, pooling layers useful for reducing the computational space and retain only the most important information, and the fully connected layers exactly the same we have seen in regular uh, neural networks. So, in order to understand convolutional layers, 
first we need to introduce the convolution operation. In computer vision, a very typical approach for processing an image is to convolve it with a filter or kernel in order to extract only salient features from the image. Like in this case, for example, if we are interested in extracting only the edges of this image, we can convolve it with a simple filter ending up with this image uh, here on the right. Now, how can we actually do that? Well, that's easy. Let's say that this is the filter we would like to use. In this case, a 3 by 3 matrix with some values. And let's also say that this on the left here is our input image, where each value in this matrix is a particular pixel value. So, in order to obtain the resulting image, we can compute each pixel of the new image as the linear combination of the original pixel values in the neighborhood of the original pixel and the weights of the kernel. So, for example, if we want to compute this pixel here, we need to sum the product between 1 and 1, 0 and 0, 0 and 1, 1 and 0, and so on and so forth, ending up with 4. 4 is the value for the corresponding pixel in the convolved image. Do it remind you anything we have already seen in this course? Well, it turns out that this is exactly the same operation which the perception does. So, in order to obtain the convolved image, we need a perceptron for each out pixel. But all of these perceptrons share the same weights encoded in the kernel matrix. So, in convolutional layers, we operate pretty in the same manner. But first, we need to introduce a bit of terminology. With feature maps, we mean each slide of the convolutional layer along the width. With receptive fill, we mean the local 3D patch in the input volume to which a specific neuron is connected. And with that column, we refer to a set of neurons that are all looking at the same region in the input volume. Since in our CNN we operate with volumes, a convolutional layer operates like performing a 3D convolution. As we have said, all the input volume is convolved using neurons in different depth columns. Each neuron is connected only to its local receptive field of filter sides times that input neurons and is like having a three-dimensional filter. Each neuron in each output feature map shares the same weights, that is, it has the same filter. But why we need more than one output feature map then? Because each filter can extract different features from the input image. One, for example, can extract horizontal edges, another vertical edges, and so on and so forth. However, the number of feature maps uh, for each convolutional layer uh, would be an order hyperparameter to tune. In convolutional neural networks architecture, it is common to periodically insert a pooling layer in between subsequent convolutional layers. Its function is to reduce the amount of parameters and computation in the network and improve robustness, retaining only the most useful information. The pooling is simply performed independently uh, on each feature map. So, for example, if we have a 4x4 feature map here on the left, we can reduce it to a 2x2 matrix, dividing the entire matrix in four parts and taking out only the maximum for each window. Other common pooling strategies are the average or the sum the values contained in each window.